Let's talk about the NFC West, Logan. Who do you have atop this division? At number one, I have the San Francisco 49ers. Uh, I have them finishing up at 10 and 7, which I think is the low end. I may bump them up wow. to 11 and 6, uh, something like that. Uh, again, I'll have full record predictions. We'll run down our standings for the AFC and NFC officially uh, on Monday. The big question uh, surrounding the San Francisco 49ers, what does Brock Purdy look like this season? Uh, Carson, it's a really rare injury uh, for quarterbacks. We traditionally don't see this. It's a torn UCL. Traditionally, you see that with starting pitchers in baseball. So it's a very strange injury to come back from with Purdy. That being said, I mean, damn, Carson, have we ever seen a team or a coach succeed with <laughs> quarterbacks in and out like a revolving door i mean no one has ever been as successful with so many different qbs and kyle shanahan man he made nick mullins uh, like wow man is nick mullins a great quarterback no not really he just plays for kyle shanahan he made cj bethard look good and by golly carson he made jimmy garoppolo's handsome ass look good so <laughs> you know what man i don't really care who is behind the line for san francisco I think he's going to make them look good. If it's Brock Purdy, if it's Sam Darnold stepping into this situation, Darnold looked good in preseason. Like, if Purdy's not ready to go, I fully, I don't know if I fully trust Sam Darnold, but I trust Sam Darnold in extent to make this team uh, at least win some games for this team and manage them to victories because this team is still loaded, man, on the offensive end. Christian McCaffrey, Debo Samuel, George Kittle. It's unfair, man. It's the best skill position unit, uh, I think, in all of football. Uh, you can talk about depth all you want. I mean, screw depth. When you've got the top-end talent that these guys have, I'll take that all day. So we do have a little bit of turnover similar to Philadelphia. They lose to Miko Ryans. They lose Mike McGlinchey, which I don't think is just a, uh, a regular loss. McGlinchey, uh, McGlinchey wasn't great in the pass blocking game, but he's a great run blocking, uh, run blocking tackle. Uh, they lose Samson Ebukam, too. They lose Jimmy Ward, Emmanuel Mosley. I don't think any of those losses are super major to me. Now, uh, as long as they have Bosa up front on the defensive line, uh, they get him paid and he's playing. Uh, they add in Javon Hargrave, who uh, Hargrave played with the Steelers a couple years back. Hargrave is one of the best pass-rushing defensive tackles uh, I think maybe I've ever seen, man. Uh, I put him in that tier. He's not a great run-stuffing guy, but he's a great pass rusher. You have... Uh, Javon Kinlaw still on the inside, too. Like, I think this Niners front four is going to be great. I love their linebackers. Dre Greenlaw, Fred Warner, some of the best coverage guys in the league. It's a, to me, Carson, betting on the Niners is a culture thing. I trust this culture. I trust the loaded talent that they have accumulated. And I trust Kyle Shanahan and their track record, right? Why am I not going to pick the Dallas Cowboys to go far in the playoffs? Well, there's a track record. There's a pattern there. They lose in the divisional round. They lose in the wild card round. What do the Niners do? They overachieve past their talent level. They have a great roster with great depth, with a great head coach. So why would I would why wouldn't I pick the Niners to be great again this year? Again, with a with a revolving door of quarterbacks. So I think 10 wins is low for San Francisco. Again, that is only because of again I don't know what Purdy's going to look like I don't know what Darnold's going to look like at the end of the day quarterback play is the biggest determinant in wins and losses so that is why I have slight regression from this season but I still think this is a great defense I still think they have loaded talent and I think they have one of the best cultures in football so I'm banking on that 10 wins is low for me I may bump them up to 11 but right now uh, I've got the Niners atop of the NFC West with 10 wins to me this is low just because I think this team is so unbelievably talented that they're going to win a lot of games regardless of the quarterback situation. If Darnold started for the entire season, I would probably take them to win 10 or 11 games. But I do think Purdy is better. And I do think based on what we've seen in preseason, his arm looks fine to me. And it's not that his arm really ever had to be dynamic. Mm -hmm. I mean, as productive as he was last season, once he took over as a starter, how many like, oh my God, look at the velocity on that tight window throw kind of moments did you get from Brock Purdy? Very few. It's mostly, hey Brock, you're smart. You make good decisions. You're capable of putting the ball where it needs to be. You have a good pocket presence. And then our elite weapons can go to work and our elite offensive mind can scheme those guys open. So 
those are my expectations for him. I don't think that Brock Purdy is anything special. I understand that there was a whole lot of hype. It's super cool that he did this as Mr. Irrelevant, but I think that people will overstate how impressive his mind mm -hmm. is when really he is executing an offensive system that Jimmy Garoppolo took to the Super Bowl. And Jimmy Garoppolo is actually a rather mistake-prone quarterback. I don't think he's smart. I think that Purdy's a little bit better, but it's just so much about being in an incredible football situation. But regardless, that is the situation. He can lean on a really good run game, which can empower the play action. He can get the underneath stuff to the Debo's and the McCaffrey's of the world. And those guys can dominate. It's just one of the best cast of weapons to throw to in football. So I think the McGlinchey loss does matter. But I still think this is going to be a really good rushing attack. It was the number six scoring sure. offense last year. I think they are a very safe bet to be a top 10 offense again. And then defensively, they were historically great last year. 16.3 points per game allowed. They were the number two run defense. They were number two in turnovers forced. They had a good pass rush that is only going to be better now that they add Hargrave. And it's just very rare to see a defense loaded with this kind of star all-pro talents. Bosa, Hufanga, Warner, now Hargrave. I mean, it is just all around a stacked unit. And I'm not too concerned about the loss of D'Amico Ryans. I think that the talent here is able to largely speak for itself. Although I do think he was a, a very good coordinator. Mm -hmm. The only concerns for me with this defense are corner. I don't think they're great. Emmanuel Mosley mm -hmm. does leave, but he was hurt for most of last year anyways. I just don't think that's a strength on this team. I think it's really sort of a weakness. And the overall depth here, I don't love. They had to let some guys go this offseason. So it's tough to replicate truly dominant defenses year after year. But I think they're going to be really, really good. There are very few teams that have this sort of talent on that side of the ball. So it's like we're talking about with the Eagles, man. The difference to me... The Eagles are a bit more talented, and they also have a significant edge in terms of quarterback play. But this team is so damn good all around that I have them winning 12 games, and I would be really surprised if they meaningfully regressed for any reason other than injury, which obviously we saw take them down after the first Super Bowl run, but that was an insane slew of injuries, like one of the unluckiest mm -hmm. seasons ever. They, to me, are a very, very safe bet to be an elite football team again this year. Especially in a division like this, where I think they're going to dunk on the Rams <laughs> and the Cardinals twice. Uh -huh. um, yeah. I, I, do like, I do like Seattle, though, Carson. I, I, I like Seattle a fair bit, and I like what they did in this offseason. They went 9-8 and eight last year. I think that's about right again this season. I have them at 9 and 8. I may drop them to 8 and 9. I think they're about a 500 unit Ooh. this year. I really like what they did in this offseason though, man. I think Seattle has the potential to maybe have the best secondary in football. Like I don't know if people understand like how loaded of a group this is. Now, you can have your reservations about Jamal Adams. Think of what you think about him, blitz boy. You know, he lines up in the box. He's an extra <laughs> linebacker. You know, whatever. You can think what you want of Jamal Adams. I still like him. But the guys around him, man, Tariq Woolen, one of the best corners in football last year. You had Devin Witherspoon, Witherspoon, excuse me, who I believe, man, had like a completion percentage of sub uh, sub 40 last year in college, was one of the best corners in the draft. That is a huge get for Seattle. And you have Quandre Diggs. Like, uh, Seattle definitely could have one of the best secondaries in football. The rest of the defense, eh, I like that they re-signed Draymond Jones. He's got 18 sacks over the last three seasons. He's been a great interior presence. They bring back Bobby Wagner. Wagner was okay last year in Los Angeles. I hope that now that he's back in Seattle, he can mm. maybe come back I to where he, he was. He was good. good. He was good. He wasn't. I don't think he was like peak Bobby Wagner. He was pretty good, but that's still a massive get and a massive upgrade over who they had last year. Plus, if Jordan Brooks can stay healthy, I mean, I think this is a really good. Uh, middle unit with Wagner and with Jordan Brooks. So they were 25th scoring defense last season. I think with the improvements in the secondary and over the middle, I think they could be average. The big question mark is, can Geno Smith stay at a Pro Bowl level, right? He's aging. He gets his bag. What Geno did last year is remarkable. I mean, Carson, I really can't think of 
There are very few quarterbacks who had NFL history that I can think that have had a revitalization like Geno did. Over 4,000 yards, 32 touchdowns, 11 picks. Let's point to a few guys. The first guy that I think of when you think of a career revitalization is probably Michael Vick, and especially stylistically how Vick changed his game after returning to the NFL, right? When he was in Atlanta, he was a dynamic ground threat. When he goes to Philly, it's all through the arm, and he is making huge plays passing. Randall Cunningham uh, was always really dependent on his legs. Uh, Gets injured, isn't as effective on the ground anymore, but when he goes to Minnesota, has the best passing uh, passing year of his career, uh, you know, with Carter, with Moss, with those guys. Gino's really unique in the fact that he wasn't a, you know, a dominant ground threat like those guys. Gino just showed up here and dominated. He didn't write back. And now they add Jackson Smith and Jigma uh, with DK Metcalf, with Tyler Lockett. Like, I, I don't really love the line. Uh, that's something that I'm not in love with. But, I mean, the receiving talent is there. And I don't really see a reason to expect Gino to, you know, I, I think 32 TDs, 11 picks, 4,000 is like the peak But why can't Geno throw for 28 TDs? Why can't he throw for, uh, you know, 3,800 yards next season? I I think he can lead this offense to being above average next year. Uh, I I do think it's important to note Geno struggled down the stretch. He was not nearly as dominant as he was in the first half of the season. But if Geno can reach that peak, I mean, I think this could be a 9 or 10 win team. So I'm expecting Geno to have slight regression next season, but I'm also expecting the Seahawks defense to be Uh, tangibly better, at least average to above average, depending on how much Bobby Wagner in this secondary can transform this team. And again, in a shitty division, I think Seattle uh, will will fare pretty well for themselves. So I think Seattle is probably going to be maybe like my last wild card team in. I'm debating between them or or maybe New York. But I think Seattle is one of those fringe playoff teams that could sneak in again this year. I like Seattle a lot, man. Like you, I think they crushed the offseason, and I am really high on Geno. And he did cool down as last year went along, Mm -hmm. and he did start making more mistakes. But I think he's a top-10 quarterback, and I do expect him to replicate the vast majority of his success from last year. I think he is one of the most accurate quarterbacks in the league. He was number three in on-target throw percentage and had the lowest bad throw percentage in the NFL. To me, he is a good, quick decision maker who can take the underneath stuff. And I think he's maybe the most effective deep ball thrower in football. Great touch, maintained accuracy downfield. And then he is a legitimately good runner. 366 yards on the ground on over five yards per carry last year. So he does have that ability to extend plays, to scramble that little bit of dual threat edge. And overall, I just think... Eighth in passing yards last year, fourth in touchdowns with low turnovers, even if it did pick up. I think he's very legit, and his situation just got even better with the addition of JSN Mm -hmm. alongside two really good receivers already. I think JSN has been super impressive. I think he's going to have an immediate big impact in a really strong rookie season. And then I think this run game is also quite good. They were seventh in yards Mm -hmm. per attempt last year. Kenneth Walker, a full season of him, I think will be scary. And they add Jack Charbonnet in the second round, who I expect to be another strong, immediate impact guy to add to that backfield. So I think it's going to be a really good offense. To me, the questions are about the defense, which I expect to improve a lot, but it was bad last year. So you're coming Mm -hmm. from a pretty low point. I really like the addition of Wagner. I love the Witherspoon pickup. I think that it's going to be a loaded secondary as you said but outside of that i think this is a poor pass rush that is really lacking Mm -hmm. in dynamic impact guys there and they got ran all over last year they were 30th in rushing yards allowed they were 26th in yards per attempt they were not very good situationally the 27th third down defense so when you're climbing from the number 25 scoring defense even with all these improvements, I think their goal should be to push into like the average range defensively. And I think that they weren't quite as good overall last year as a nine and eight record might suggest because the defense Mm -hmm. was bad. They did cool down three and five down the stretch of the regular season. And then they kind of got rocked in the playoffs, but because I think they have added so much talent, I do see improvement from them this year and because I do believe in Geno sustaining his level mostly. So 
I have them going 10 and 7. I do think they are a playoff caliber team and certainly head and shoulders above the rest of this division. So, who you got in the three spot, Logan? Because it's going to get ugly from here. The Rams following a Super Bowl title. Uh, the most losses by defending Super Bowl champions since 1999. Man, they went 5-12. and 12. Uh, The only team to come close to that is the 1999 Denver Broncos going 6-10 and 10 after replacing John Elway. And they claim, Carson, this is a remodel and not a rebuild. Nah, I know when you guys are lying to me. Come on, man. I, I think the writing is on the wall for Los Angeles Carson. Considering the turnover that we've seen over the past couple of years, Sean McVay, uh, you know, playing... Uh, Play a one hand in, one hand out with, oh, am I going to retire? Oh, am I not going to retire? I just don't think this team is good enough. And for a guy that is experienced, it's hard winning a Super Bowl title, man. It is tire. It's hard gearing up year after year, getting a team ready to go to the Super Bowl. And considering that McVay has already climbed that mountain and he's teased at maybe retiring, I think another down year, and we could see Stafford retire, we could see Cup leave town, we could see Donald retire. And we could see McVay leave for the booth. Uh, again, bullshit. This is not a remodel. This is a rebuild. They traded Jalen Ramsey. They lost a lot of big talent. Leonard Floyd, Allen Robinson, Taylor Rapp. This offseason, they bring in 38 rookies, essentially. 14 draft picks, 24 undrafted free agents. Like, I don't care what you say. I mean, like, the numbers and what has happened just kind of prove the point that this is a full overhaul. When you give up all those draft picks to go get that ring, this was kind of the inevitability of what was going to go happen when they traded for BWAGs, when they traded for Ramsey, when they traded for Stafford. This is what was going to happen. So, yeah, man, I, I think the Rams are kind of going to stink. I, <laughs> I, I have them going 5-12, and 12 and it's hard because I like Stafford still, even though he struggled last season. Uh, he was not healthy. He missed eight games. He was sacked 29 times in nine games. I think this is a really bad offensive line. I think Cooper Cup is the only relevant offensive weapon that they have. Yeah, man, I, I just think it's going to be kind of a disaster for, for the Rams. So, Donald, is your only building block on the defense? Like, if they still had Bobby Wagner, maybe i go, yeah, man, the Rams could maybe creep up to six or seven wins. So they have their centerpieces. I just don't think the centerpieces and the bases are strong enough to hold up really flimsy depth and really flimsy mm -hmm. players around the team. So I, I do think at the end of this season, we could see Stafford, McVay, and Donald all depart, and we could see Cooper Cup get traded, and we see this team launch into a full rebuild. That's honestly where I'm leaning with how many young players are here. So I have them going 5-12. and 12. I, there's just not a whole lot that I like to buy in here, man. A poor O line, an aging Stafford, an aging Donald, not a lot of talent on the defense. Unless Cooper Cup catches like 3,000 yards, man, and shatters every receiving record and is the greatest receiver we've ever seen, I'm not buying into it. So, I, yeah, I don't think the Rams are going to be that good. No, they're definitely not. I really don't see the path to them being good because I'm counting on something of a Stafford bounce back, and I still have them winning five games the Stafford thing is complicated because obviously he looked like a borderline top five quarterback in 2021 mm -hmm. and then plays through the elbow injury last year looks bad I think that his level is going to be somewhere in the middle I don't think that we're getting back to 2021 levels I also think that the overall offensive talent isn't as good which was definitely bolstering him i mean that receiving core to me was significantly better with bobby trees with obj the <laughs> weapons are not what they were and i mean now cup has this setback with the hamstring which is apparently just a day-to-day -day thing but it's really scary when you consider how badly the injury bug has bit this team cup missing mm -hmm. almost half of last season you don't want to go into a situation where it's like all right tyler higby and van jefferson and demarcus robinson let's go out there and let's have fun boys and let's really <laughs> Let's give it our best. So I just don't think there's a lot going in their favor. This was one of the least effective rushing attacks in football last year, 27th in yards and yards per attempt. I think the O-line is atrocious. So, I mean, even if Stafford is good and Cup is healthy, it is so one-dimensional, this offense, so reliant on even one weapon. As you say, the other guys to me are very mediocre. 
And then defensively, man, losing almost all of their best players, Ramsey, Mm -hmm. Wagner, Leonard Floyd. This defense wasn't even good last year when all of those guys (laughs) and Aaron Donald were healthy. In those 11 weeks when Donald was healthy, they still let up 22.9 points per game, which is actually even worse than when he got hurt. It was just a below average defense. They have been very reliant on the star talent there. Now they have shedded a lot of the star talent, and I don't think that they have replenished it. They have no other dynamic pass rushers outside of Donald. I think the linebackers in the secondary are both below average units. I think the defense is going to be bad. And there is no way to me this offense is going to be good enough, dynamic enough with the line and run game limitations being so reliant on Cup as that weapon, being so reliant on a major Stafford bounce back, and with the potential for injury at any moment to just decimate them because their depth is so bad, so shoddy. Yeah, I don't see a lot of upside. It's incredible how precipitous a fall we saw. But the reality is people can point at injuries for last year. First of all, the depth was always a big problem with the construction of this roster, and they were able to survive it in the Super Bowl run, which is the most important thing. But yeah, it came back to bite them. But they weren't good when their guys were healthy. Stafford wasn't good. Not that he was fully healthy, but they just weren't a good football team. And now I think they're a worse football team. So I have them winning five games. Yeah, dude, for me, the biggest distinction too is if this team is going to be great, it would be on the shoulders of Matthew Stafford and Cooper Cup dominating. Well, what else needs to go right for Matthew Stafford and Cooper Cup to dominate? It's the offensive line dominating. This is not a good offensive line. I mean, I think this is one of the worst O-lines in football. Again, Mm -hmm. I'll repeat it. Stafford got sacked 29 times in nine games last year. If they can't buy Stafford time, I just really see no upside with this offense. And, yeah, man, if Cup goes down, what is – look, man, I like Tutu Atwell as as much as the next guy, man. What, is he going to step up and and give me in a 1,000-yard season? Maybe. (laughs) Probably not. So – (laughs) <laughs> yeah, dude, it really is a precipitous fall off. I mean, take notes, dude. Like, you can get that championship. Is it worth it? Look at what the Seahawks did by trading away Russell Wilson. Like, I don't know, man. I think that's something other teams need to maybe look into. Like, if a team is willing to buy in on a superstar that high, it may be worth it to go out and get those future assets. Like, like, like Carson, hear me out, man. If you're the Rams, if you're sitting at the trade deadline— you have a losing record. You've won one or two games. Like, are you thinking about maybe dealing Donald, about maybe dealing Cup? Like, where are you at sure. as a franchise? I, now, I certainly would. Yeah, I would now because they're so far away. But to me, that's an entirely separate point than was it worth it to go all in for the Super Bowl run? Because it's always, I absolutely in my, it's, think that that was worth it. I, th- I think it's always worth it. If you get that chip, you do it. I'm just saying, I don't know how long it's they're going to be down it. here in I don't know how long they're going to be down here in the dregs for, but they did it to themselves. Like, this is, you got your ring. Yeah. I, <laughs> appreciate it, man. Hang up. Uh, really appreciate that banner. I mean, it has been the epitome of what people were predicting, which is basically, all right, you're going to go all in. You're going to acquire as much superstar talent as we've seen put together through trades on one team. They successfully did that, and you're going to have your Super Bowl window, but your depth is going to be seriously compromised, and then you are going to have incredibly limited opportunities to rebuild after that. They traded every first-round pick that they possibly mm-hmm. could, and that's exactly what has happened. The Rams may be in the midst of one of the most precipitous Super Bowl fall-offs ever, but Logan, the Arizona Cardinals might just be one of the worst football teams ever. Do they win a game this year? Dude, somebody told me I was crazy for saying that. Uh, my roommate told me I was crazy for saying that last night. I don't know. I can't point to one group on this team where I'm like, yeah, this team's good. Not great. Oh, not good. even close. Uh, Carson, let me ask you something. Do you have that fire in your gut? How'd you, um... how'd you drive here today? How'd you get here today? Did you uh, ride the bus? I work from home. A big part of this turnover is Jonathan Gannon, former defensive coordinator of the Philadelphia Eagles, stepping in. Maybe he's a defensive savant. Maybe he's a new Nathaniel Hackett. What I do know is 
I don't know if Jonathan Gannon could, like, motivate me to stand up, dude. I don't know if he could, like, get me fired up to, like... I don't know if Jonathan Gannon could get me out of bed, man. It's already a challenge. Like, Gannon would just be like, hey, man, what's up? He's just dry. He's just dry, dude. So, I, I, dude, I really, like, that's what I really wonder, man. Like, is, is Jonathan Gannon a defensive savant, or is he, like, a lackey that the Arizona Cardinals found to run this season into the ground? Like, is this a Hugh Jackson kind of situation? This is separate from everything else. I just wonder if the Cardinals are finally the first, or the second team to deliberately tank because they know <laughs> what's going to happen at the end of this season, and they get Caleb Williams. Some people have been talking about Kyler Murray returning this year. I don't really see the point. I honestly think that if the Cardinals are going to be this bad, we're going to get another Josh Rosen situation where Murray is dealt to the highest bidder at the end of the year. Caleb Williams steps in and is the new franchise guy for Arizona. Uh, if that happens, God bless your soul, Caleb Williams. This is going to be a horrible situation to buy into. So in my humble opinion, I think that the Arizona Cardinals are tanking without deliberately tanking. They cut Colt McCoy. They bring in Josh Dobbs. Wow, you are locking yourselves. Not that there were a ton of other options here. You are handcuffing yourselves to utter mediocrity. Again, I point to the one prominent mediocrity. Play in jo- I mean, maybe my not friend Josh me- Dobbs has dreams in which he's mediocre. That's his <laughs> Very Super Bowl fair. is a mediocre Very- game. <laughs> Very fair. Again, I was going to point to the one play of Josh Dobbs' career that everybody remembers. It's fourth down and like 20, and he checks it down to Derrick Henry in the backfield. <laughs> Booyah. That's how you win football games. So, yeah, dude. I, I The Cardinals I have winning three games. That's the high end. That is the high end for the Arizona oh. Cardinals. I, I think, dude, I seriously think a two or one win season is is on the ropes. I don't like any of the talent here. I don't like the guy they brought in for the coaching staff. And I think Josh Dobbs or Clayton Toon, whoever they put at the helm, is going to be the worst quarterback in football. Yeah, yeah this is going to be a rough season for Arizona, man. Oh, my God. Rough is an understatement. And I reacted like that when you said three because I thought that that was pretty generous. <laughs> Let me ask you this. I yeah. think that this feels like the worst football team going into a season since like the 2017 Browns since Cleveland. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Do you think Josh Dobbs is the worst day one starting quarterback since Kaiser? Is he worse than that? Cause this to me is a historically (sighs) rarely bad situation. The one distinction I would make with Kaiser is I wouldn't say that I don't think Kaiser was ready. Like it, it, you, mm-hmm. they interviewed his college coach, uh, you know, in the in the pre-draft process, and he said, "Kaiser's a developmental guy. He needs time to get ready." Uh, Deshaun Kaiser was never ready to be a day one starter. Josh Dobbs at least has experience, but again, this is a guy who has been cut from. You know, the Steelers have cut him. The Steelers have traded him away. The Steelers are one of the most backup QB needy teams in football. We've had Mason Rudolph and Duck Hodges the past couple years. Josh Dobbs couldn't make a roster with those guys. So I don't think he's worse than Kaiser, but God, Lee, man, yes, I do think he is the worst starter since Kaiser. I think he really might be worse, man. I am very, (laughs) very deeply concerned about their situation. I think he's going to make a lot of mistakes. I think his mechanics aren't good. I think he's going to really struggle to consistently throw the football, and he's not nearly a dynamic enough rushing threat to offset that. Mm -mm. It's going to be terrible, man, and he certainly doesn't have any talent around him that is going to make up for his own plethora of issues. It was already a brutal situation without Kyler last year. They went 1-6, and after he got hurt and averaged 16.7 points per game. And by the way, they were bad with Kyler. And I think that Kyler is actually still a good starting quarterback. I think he's probably the most overhated player in football Mm -hmm. right now. Like the rare combination of historically great rushing threat with dynamic arm talent, not making too many mistakes. I think that people have gotten too low on him because of his personality and because of Arizona's situation. And I think that is going to show this year. The weapons losing D Hop, it's gonna be brutal. Respect to Hollywood Brown and Rondale Moore, but it's certainly a below average receiving core. 
The run game is not going to be good. I think Kyler has helped carry them there in the past, but they're not going to have that sort of dual threat. And James Conner, incredible story. Not an efficient, complete, high-level runner of the football. I think the line is totally mediocre. They had Paris Johnson in the first round, which is a good foundational piece. But there's just nothing that approaches to me a plus <laughs> unit here offensively. And the quarterback situation is so bad i don't have faith in josh dobbs to manage games I, he doesn't have the sort of skill position talent that can make up for his limitations it's just going to be really ugly and then defensively they were horrible last year they were the number 31 scoring defense their line and their pass rush are awful they were bad against the run last year and they're going to have an offense that is going to be turning out three and out into turnover, into three and out. Like they're just going to have short field after short field. They're going to be on the field for 38 minutes a game. So that's just going to compound all of their existing and very obvious personnel issues. I think this is going to be a historically awful team. I do have them winning one game and I don't know where that one win comes, <laughs> but I just can't pick a team to go. zero and 17 too much weird stuff happens. The Browns did it, but they also won one game in another season when it certainly didn't seem like they were gonna. But yeah, man, they are next level awful. 100%. I do think I, I chase the over here. I just can't. I don't know if I'd ever pick a team to win less than two games. For me, that's just too insane, but I see it, man. I... Yeah. Oh. I wonder what the odds are on that to pick the Cardinals to go winless. I might sprinkle a little bit down on that, man. That seems probably pretty good. A, a, a little reasonable. Yeah. Probably yeah, man. I mean, this good. is the begin. This is the beginning of a rebuild and I don't see the Cardinals. I don't know, man, this is going to be a long turnover process. Like they need a lot. And I really worry about them too, Carson. Cause there's not like there's good players here. Like Buddha Baker's on the back end. I still love Buddha. Like, I, I feel like you also just run the risk of losing those guys, too. Like, actual decent players if you have a season this bad. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm baffled. I'm baffled. One win is crazy. Two questions. Do you think that Kyler plays at all this year? And do you think that he ever plays for the Cardinals again? I, the, the way they're making the injury sound is that Kyler is going to be healthy before the end of the year. That is what they make it sound like to me. I would say no. Like, what's the upside? What's the point? I, I would rehab. I would get healthy. I would maybe practice. I don't really see the point of Kyler coming back and playing other than to maybe get the fans some hope. Like, this is not going to be a playoff team. I would say no on both counts. I'd say he doesn't play this year. I'd say he does not play for the Cardinals again. Where do you come down on that front? I don't know how much hope it's going to give the fans when Kyler comes in for his first start in a year and immediately is sacked nine times. Fair. I don't think he plays this year because, like you, I just think with the way that we view these things today – I don't know why you would risk injury for an entirely meaningless football season. And in terms of playing with the Cardinals again, I think he will. I think we are working towards a breaking point. Well, I guess actually it depends on if they get the number one pick. If they get the number one pick, which I expect them to, then I think that they take Caleb Williams and I think that that's it. Otherwise, I would think that they probably trot him out again, have him improve his trade value. And either way, I think that they are looking long-term towards another option, which to me, it doesn't make the most sense unless you do get an elite talent like Caleb Williams. Cause I think that Kyler is good. And I think that he's had to overcome a bad situation. I understand the personality stuff, but I think somebody somewhere is going to buy in on that talent. I think so too. And they have the Texans' first-round pick for this upcoming year, so they can afford to double-dip a little bit uh, depending on what position group they want to attack next mm -hmm. if they get Caleb. But I think that's the point of this year, Carson. I think, not to compare this to, like, the Wemby sweepstakes or anything, but I think people know who's coming at the end of this year, and I think there is a legitimate incentive to not go out there and win football games. Although, again, to state the obvious, that is clearly against the NFL bylaws. Like, you're not <laughs> taking oh, is you. illegal. Yeah. Thank if you, you didn't officer. know, you're not allowed to, you're not allowed to uh, 
officially and intentionally lose football games. But I think that's what they're doing. And if they end up with Caleb Williams, not the worst strategy. Uh, also, but if you're Steven you Ross, it, you very surreptitiously bribe your coach to lose games and mm. then he sues you and you get suspended and you lose a first round pick. That's a way to Smart. do it. Uh, also, if you put down $100 on the Cardinals to go winless, dude, you could only win 2500 bucks. I feel like that's insane. I feel like those odds should be even better. I like those odds. No, I like those odds, dude. Are you kidding me? I've got them at one win, man. I might have to consider that. <laughs> All right. Something. I might have to sprinkle there. There you have it, folks. All of our NFL divisions have now been broken down. Like Logan said, we are going to be getting into awards and playoff predictions early next week and then the season kicks off on thursday incredibly exciting if you want more nerd sesh content that you can follow us across social channels tiktok and instagram at nerd sesh tiktok is where we're most prolific with our trivia content you can also follow us on twitter at nerd underscore sesh you can find the show across audio platforms and you can subscribe to the volume YouTube page to get every show with video. You can also get some Nerd Sesh merch. We got the flags behind us. We've got hats. We've got shirts. We've got hoodies. You can sign up for our Discord. Join us there where you can talk football, basketball, any sports topics, really. Uh, that is at the link tree in our bios across our social channels. And with that, as always, appreciate you guys. I've been Carson Brabber. I have been Logan Camden. And this was Nerd Sesh. <laughs> <laughs>